Thank you for the visit. PsyQ is science made simple for the rest of us. Enjoy. Scientists at the University of Manchester have created the world's first molecular robot that is capable of performing basic tasks including building other molecules. The tiny robots, which are a millionth of a millimeter in size, can be programmed to move and build molecular cargo using a tiny robotic arm. Each individual robot is capable of manipulating a single molecule and is made up of just 150 carbon hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms. To put that size into context, a pile of a billion billion of these robots would still only be the same size as a few grains of salt. The robots operate by carrying out chemical reactions in special solutions which can then be controlled and programmed by scientists to perform the basic tasks. In the future such robots could be used for medical purposes, advanced manufacturing processes, and even building molecular factories and assembly lines. The research, which was funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, EPSRC. Professor David Lee, who led the research at University's School of Chemistry, explains, all matter is made up of atoms, and these are the basic building blocks that formed molecules. A robot is literally a molecular robot constructed of atoms just like you can build a very simple robot out of Lego bricks. The robot then responds to a series of simple commands that are programmed with chemical inputs by a scientist. It is similar to the way robots are used on a car assembly line. Those robots pick up a panel and position it so that it can be riveted in the correct way to build the bodywork of a car. So, just like the robot in the factory, our molecular version can be programmed to position and rivet components in different ways to build different products just on a much smaller scale at a molecular level. The benefit of having machinery that is so small is it massively reduces demand for materials, can accelerate and improve drug discovery, dramatically reduce power requirements and rapidly increase the miniaturization of other products. Therefore, the potential applications for molecular robots are extremely varied and exciting. Professor Lee says, molecular robotics represents the ultimate in the miniaturization of machinery. Our aim is to design and make the smallest machines possible. This is just the start, but we anticipate that within 10 to 20 years molecular robots will begin to be used to build molecules and materials on assembly lines and molecular factories. Whilst building and operating such tiny machines is extremely complex, the techniques used by the team are based on simple chemical processes. Professor Leah added, the robots are assembled and operated using chemistry. This is the science of how atoms and molecules react with each other, and how larger molecules are constructed from smaller ones. It is the same sort of process scientists use to make medicines and plastics from simple chemical building blocks. Then, once the nanorobots have been constructed, they are operated by scientists by adding chemical inputs which tell the robots what to do and when, just like a computer program. What a thought-provoking technology. If these minuscule robots could build self-replicating molecules in the human body that could attack cancers or viruses or plaques in the blood, what would be the implications of that? If self-replicating synthetic cells could find and replace all diseased and malfunctioning cells in the human body and replace them with mortal, perfectly healthy synthetic cells, how would that affect the life of an otherwise unhealthy person? If those cells had the capacity to recognize and replace any cell type and were truly self-replicating and they continued to replace every cell in the body with immortal functioning synthetic cells until they replaced all the cells of the human body, how would that directly redefine the meaning of what it is to be human? If they continued replacing biological cells with immortal cells until they replaced your entire brain, and if those synthetic brain cells retained all your memories and emotions and personality, would you still be you? If self-replicating cells replaced every single cell in your body, yet you still felt and looked exactly like you did before the process began, 
right down to the finest details, would you still be you? Who knows, the way science is advancing forward, that is a question we may well have to answer in the very near future. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, share and leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more releases from PsyQ.